Howdy, howdy, howdy. Come on in, pull up a chair, kick up your feet and relax. Because today I am going to be unboxing and taking a first look at the initial expansion for the new edition of the Pathfinder adventure card game. This is Curse of the Crimson Throne. Cursed, cursed, I say. Hi there, and welcome aboard. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host. I also happen to be the Grand Poobah of TheGamingGang.com, as well as the host of The Daily Dope, which is a live stream all about tabletop gaming. It does air Monday through Fridays right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. So today I'm taking a look at the first expansion for the new Pathfinder Adventure card game, and it is Curse of the Crimson Throne. Obviously enough, this is based on the very well-received Pathfinder Adventure Path, the campaign for the Pathfinder role-playing game. So, Curse of the Crimson Throne is designed by Chad Brown, Keith Richmond, Aviva Schechterson, Mike Selinker, and Liz Spain. Of course, it is from Paizo Inc., game is for one to six players. Yes, I do believe that this expansion does expand the number of players from one to four to one to six. It's for ages 13 and up and plays in around 90 minutes per adventure. This expansion is available now and it does carry an MSRP of $49.99. So let's move on over to the other camera. So I've got this, uh, this set up. And uh, I do want to point out that this box is quite a bit smaller. In fact, I'll grab this kind of. This is the core set box, and this is the expansion. But uh, there is room inside the core set, obviously enough, for more expansion. So this this box is pretty hefty. It really is. I, so I can tell you right now, this is going to be jam packed with cards, probably some uh, some pawns as well for some of the major baddies. So let's flip this on over and get the shrink wrap off because when I do an unboxing, it really is an unboxing. That is for sure. So I'm not gonna read everything on the back here, but it says the king is dead, long live the queen. Corvosa is cursed that none of its monarchs shall ever die of old age or produce an heir. The metropolis teeters on the edge of anarchy. It needs heroes that can face down crime lords, rioting mobs, insane cultists, virulent plague, undead hordes, crazed tabletop gaming streamers. Nah, I'm just throwing that one in. Just joking. Scheming devils, corrupt nobles, barbarian chieftains, and ancient and forgotten evils that seek to dominate and plunder the city. This expansion to the popular cooperative strategy game pits one to six players against monsters, perils, and traps as you save the city of Corvosa from threats both ancient and new. Choose your character, build a deck of unique equipment, magic, and allies, and explore lethal locations as you journey through an exciting fantasy tale. As your adventures continue, your characters will add remarkable gear and breathtaking magic to their decks. They'll also gain incredible powers, which will need to challenge more and more powerful threats. All right, so there we go. And of course, it does require the Adventure Card Game Core Set to play because there are going to be some core cards that you will need from the Core Set. Let's get this on open. I do want to point out that uh, if you are not familiar with the new edition of Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, be sure to check out my previous video because I took a look at the Core Set. I will point out, I am not exactly well-versed in the Pathfinder Adventure card game. I did play a little bit of the uh, the initial release when it was uh, out on uh, iOS. So, uh, here we've got a couple of uh, pawn punch boards. But, uh, strangely enough, they're the same exact characters. So, I don't know if that's 
accidental, if it's we're only supposed to have one, or if uh, there's supposed to be eight different characters. So we will find out. We will find out in just a bit. Now, one of the new things about the new edition of the Pathfinder adventure card game are these storybooks. Now, first off, I can tell you this storybook here is actually a little bit thicker than the storybook from the core set. So uh, there are over 500 cards here. We're going to take a peek at some of them. I'm not going to look at every single card, but uh, I will point out, I'm going to page through this. I'm going to page through this fairly quickly to kind of avoid some spoilers, but uh, we will get a, get a look here. So we've got some new rules. So we've got supporters in the base. So that's a new type of support card. Oh, it represents helpful citizens of the city. Okay, and it's environs. So talking about uh, during this adventure path, we've got uh, new random scenario types. Okay. So we're talk going through the adventures here. So it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six adventures. So uh, the way I saw in the core set was each of the adventures were actually broken up kind of into chapters, though. So we've got uh, scenario one. There's a shark. Okay. It's Bruce. Uh, the haunted, haunted fortunes. Okay. So see, here we go. So we've got scenario 1A, 1B, and 1C. Now, there were three, three parts to each of the ones in the core set. So here we've got a fourth part. Then we go to scenario two. So we've got 2C, 2D. Okay, so it looks like there's four parts in each of these chapters. So we've got scenario three. Oops. Scenario four. What do you what do you think? Are we gonna have five scenarios here or just just the four? I'm guessing five. Let's see what we get. There we go, scenario 5A. Oh, look at that, we got six. There's six of them, but not all of them have four parts to them. Although this one looks like it does. It does, look at that. Wow, that's a lot going on in this. So all together we got 48 pages and we get a little bonus adventure too. So we get 48 pages in the new storybook. So uh, that's interesting. I like the artwork too. Pretty cool artwork on this. That's the, another thing I like. Uh, I like the artwork on the cards. So we've got four decks of cards here. And I don't see, I'm sorry, I should say there's five decks of cards. I was going to say, I don't see any uh, separators, which is okay because we had the, um, the different separators by like character and items and spells, blessings, so on and so forth. So there is quite a bit of room in the core box for uh, expansions. It, with as many cards as these have, I would take a stab. You could probably fit two, maybe three of the expansions. I know Paizo's got loads and loads of stuff planned for the adventure card game, this new edition. In fact, if you'd like to learn more about the Adventure Card Game Society, I do have a video from Origins Game Fair, which was from just a few weeks ago. Uh, and we sit down, we talk about the Adventure Game Society. So uh, Adventure Card Game Society, I should say. It was really interesting. It was it was very cool. All right, so let's cut these open. We're going to take a quick peek here. So let's take a look to see. We've got characters, and it looks like, looks like these characters, are they new or are they... Kind of the same characters from the starting set. And I will zoom in so we can get a better look at the characters as well. I should say not the characters, the cards. All right, so. That should be good. So we've got Hecon. Oh, it's zoom out just ah it's a little too much let's say zoom out just come on you there we go just a little touch because that way I, my hand can actually move a little bit and still have the card nope 
these are new characters because Kess is a new character. Quinn's a new character. Varian. And then one of the cool things that I noticed, now I don't know if this was, I don't recall this being part of the original uh, game. Now it's possible that it made an appearance later on in different expansions, but we get two different roles for each of the characters as well. So you can choose a role for your specific character. So that kind of kind of customizes it a little bit more. So I thought that was very cool when I was looking through the core set. So we've got Herald of the Harrow or Herald of the Horn. So we've got what, four new characters was it? Looks like it, yep. We had four new characters. The different roles here. Blackjack, okay. Oh, okay, that's something different. Uh, got some wild cards here. So we got a wild card there. Now we'll start getting into the actual cards itself. Now, as I pointed out, uh, if you didn't see the core set video, uh, this is not a deck building game. This is a, this is a card game that really does its best to emulate a role playing game, a GM less role playing game very nicely as well, too. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of these things. So we've got Cohort. we got Scourge. More Scourges. Low-level Story Bane Rosters. So this is kind of new. This is different. And you'll notice that down here in the lower right corner, there'll be a little symbol. That symbol is going to indicate where is this card from. So this shows that this is from the Crimson Curse of the Crimson Throne. So we got some locations, Abandoned Shacks, Alley, Arsenal, Bank of Abadar, Barracks, Base, Blood Pool, Boat. It's more like a ship to me than a boat. Cinderlands, Den of Iniquity, Docks, uh, Dunes. One thing, another thing that you'll find is there's, there's that image with Bruce. <laughs> so... Uh, one of the things that you'll find is there are not a lot of duplicate cards. So this has 550 cards. We are not going to see a whole lot of duplicate cards here. So that is, uh, that's a lot of artwork. It's, and it's a lot of variation as well. So we've got a Glade. we got a Hospice, an Office, an Ossuary, the Pits, a Reading Room, Rooftops, Slaughterhouse, Spider Nest, Tenement. A lot of locales in this adventure. Adventure, I should say. The thicket, the throne room. All right, so we get some story banes. Got some monsters. So these are lower level monsters here. I'm assuming that some of some of the adventures in uh, Curse of the Crimson Throne are going to require some of the monsters from the core set as well. So we've got some barriers. We've got new weapons. The scimitar, a scythe, a sword cane. New spells. Got some new armor. New items. Quite a few items here. Got some new allies. <laughs> the pig's on our side, thank God. <laughs> We've got this one. We've got the pig. The pig is with us. Uh, our spider. Well, I guess that'll help you in the spider layer, maybe. Uh, Sands of the Hour. Okay, so there's a lot of those blessings. So we got some supporters. These are these are the new cards, uh, where these are um, like humans, uh, citizens of the city that are helping. Then we got some story banes that are going up in level here. So these are now story bane level one. So that's that deck. Let's crack open this one here. We'll just flip kind of quickly through. Just give you an idea. Give you an idea of the variety that's in here. Uh, the theater, the twin, the tyrant, the unicorn. See, now we got uh, some level two supporters. We got level two story banes. Level two monsters. Diseased rats, a ghoul bat, I'm the guardian zombie. I keep an eye on all the other zombies. 
So vampire spawn, then we get some barriers. Sick child. Some more weapons. Some new spells. There's just there's a lot packed into this box here. I'll tell you that right now. So all these different items. We got some new allies. Uh, level three supporter. We got some new story banes. Now we're at level three. Level three monsters. Level three barriers. I saw uh, in a, a promo pack of cards that uh, that I had that we took a peek at in the core set video. It looked like there might these might go to level five. I'm not positive, but I, they might go to level five because there was a, there was a promo card that looked like it was a level five. So we got third level weapons, third level spells, some third level items and allies. There we go. So now we're getting into uh, level four here. So we got some story bane level fours, level four monsters and barriers. And weapons and spells. Moon Maiden armor, bearskin armor. Okay. Some new items as well. Got some level four allies. Now there we go. So here we go. Level five. So we got Storybane five. We got level five monsters. Makes me wonder if we actually go to like to a six. Oh, I went out of order. Looks like I got some level one stuff here. Sorry, gang. All right. Let's take a look at these real quick. So we got level one story banes, some level one monsters, and barriers. Although that's weird. We did go through some level one stuff. This must just be uh, another deck of level one items and weapons and spells and things like that. Toxic Cloud. Magic Hide Armor. Bastion Boots. A Smoke Bomb. Now we get some allies. Bound Imp. Gentleman Explorer. Yes. I love to explore and I'm a gentleman as well. Uh, blessings. Level 1. Wow. A lot of blessings. There are, uh, and there are some dupes as far as the blessings go. So... Wow, look at all these loads of them. Hmm, okay. And I would think that the blessings are actually the spells that the the clerics would use, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's not how the blessings work. All right, so that was uh, that was kind of out of order there. So here we go. We've got more level fives. So let's see if this goes to a level six. And I would take a wild stab that these levels don't actually correspond to the same kind of leveling as you would have in the Pathfinder role-playing game. I would think that uh, these levels probably count for a, a little bit more because, for an example, we've got some level zero stuff and there, you don't have level zero characters starting off in Pathfinder. So, so we've got some monsters. We've got more barriers. Horbane Heavy Pick. Got some level 5 allies. Yeah, okay, so we got level 6 supporter. There we go, level 6 story banes, sure enough. Level 6 monsters. I don't wanna I don't wanna you know show off all of them. I'm sure people want want to be surprised when they're playing this. So got uh, some level 6 barriers. Level six weapons. I do, it does appear that these weapons are all kind of, like we started off, we had like a level one scythe. And it seems like we keep every level, we're seeing that there's like a scythe-like weapon. So just like we should see a scimitar, right? Watch. I'm like, yeah, we'll see a scimitar and we don't see one. No, we don't see one. So we got some level six spells. There you go. <laughs> Meteor swarm. We got some level six armor. 
some level six items. Staff of Greater Healing. We got some allies. Oh, look at that. We actually hit a level seven story bane and armor and an item. Pretty wild. Pretty sweet. Well, the the way the um, the adventure paths normally go is once you know all six parts of the adventure path have been completed, usually your characters go from like first level up to you know high teens. So I can see where we go from like the level zero up to the uh, the level seven as far as the adventure card game as well. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out. So we've got, like I said before, we have the five decks of cards. I am actually going to sort these into the core set. So when I do the review of this, I will I will not be like going through all of these cards again. I will just pull some of them out and talk about that. Because I can tell you right now, I don't want to be walking around <laughs> with these cards in these decks just flopping all over the place in this box. So I will have to be very careful with that. So we've got that. We've got, uh, strangely enough, I don't know why we've got two punch boards. So I, I think maybe we got an extra dupe by accident because uh, I believe it's only the heroes that we see getting these pawns. Now, of course, if you already play the Pathfinder role-playing game and you've got a bunch of pawns, you can bust those out when you're playing the adventure card game as well. So we also have the 48-page uh, storybook. So there's a lot of story in this as well. And that is what we find when we take everything from Curse of the Crimson Throne for the Pathfinder adventure card game outside the box. So, of course, I will have a review of both the core set as well as Curse of the Crimson Throne in the very, very near future. And of course, don't forget to catch my live Monday through Friday stream, The Daily Dope, right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. As I like to say when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV, Loads and loads of stuff, folks. <laughs> a lot of people think that the Gaming Gang channel is all there is. It's like, uh, no, you're missing out on a lot if you don't go to the GamingGang.com. In fact, get your geek on at the GamingGang.com. And, of course, until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you're ready for some more fun and you'd like to check out the latest episode of The Daily Dope, my live Monday through Friday show that airs at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube, click right here. And if you'd like to roll the dice and push your luck and see a randomly selected video from the channel, click right here. You pays you money, you takes your chances. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer and thank you for watching.